Hello, everybody, and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Uh, what is this? Well, this is where I sit down for the next hour, hour and a half, some amount of hours, and I go through all the submissions, the end of month submissions in the Painters Motivating Painters uh, Facebook group. So this is our uh, our Facebook group that's all about taking your next step in your hobby journey. So uh, if you're interested in joining us on your own personal journey, just click the link down below in the description. We'd love to have you come join us, whether you're just starting out or a master. And we invite our members to post, uh, if they should so feel, one uh, miniature a month into an event that we have set up. You can find that on the right here under the events. Uh, sorry, on the right here under the events. And you'll see here I'm in the November review submissions. And uh, we ask them to limit themselves to one, no more than one, and to specifically request what they want feedback on. And I'll do my best over the next uh, amount of time that we're sitting here to uh, give them feedback, offer direction, and help people take their own next step on their personal hobby journey. So, uh, like I said, the real idea here is just to have you as hobbyists and painters share your work, uh, and then I'll do my best to give you some feedback that can help you improve in the way you want. So please do, uh, when you post these, uh, ask for you know the specific thing you want and that you're looking for because that helps direct me. In addition, I'll often use shortcuts. I'll say you need to improve your contrast or you need to, or you know, tips on non-metallic metal or items like that. Uh, for that, I have a video linked down in the description. You can watch that video down there. I go into deep detail using different sample miniatures on exactly what that means. Uh, so if you get that feedback, feel free to reference down to that video in the description, and that'll help you out. I do that because I need to keep each of these reviews somewhat short given the number that we have otherwise i will be here until next month and you know i love doing this but i do have to have some life too so at any rate uh let's get into it uh i've got this as you can see i've already got everything teed up here so we start back at the beginning of the month let's take a look we've got hugo trembley with his first mini posted here uh, said he's, he's watched a lot of concepts to get his, 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 uh, or he's watched a lot of, uh, tutorials to get the basic concepts down. Tried to apply them on this guy. Edge, edge, uh, highlights and contrast work mostly. I'd like to improve his metallics and cleanliness. Uh, any other topics to improve would be appreciated. Sure. Well, I mean, you already know the areas you should be focusing on, so that's good. And those are always early good things to focus on. And I agree, but overall, this is a very nice miniature. Uh, it, it does look nicely clean. So here's a couple of things that I would tell you to, to focus on. Uh, one, when it comes to the metals, we do need some more tonal variation here. And that would be what I would say across the miniature, uh, more depth of color. So when we look at the red, you know, think, consider adding some more shading and things like that, especially down in the depths here. So you did the edge highlighting, putting some shades on the opposite side of that can help to, to sort of uh, create more you know, depth and visual interest to your miniatures. Same with the metals. I have videos on adding uh, shading to metals and what to do there. Uh, so I would check those out. Uh, lastly, I would say your face, the face is the center point of the miniature. It's where we want to look. Uh, and just, you know, that's rather flat still. We want to add more color to that. Um, Darren Latham has a great video on painting Space Marine faces. So check out his uh, for something very specific to what you're working on. Uh, I also have several tutorials on painting faces, and so I would I would encourage you to go check that out because what we want to see is more reds, you know, and you sort of yellows and tonal variation in the face, that kind of thing. But overall, it's a great mini. Uh, you're doing really well for just starting out. Okay, so Dan Herrera brings us uh, the Creature Caster Big Demon, asks some questions about sort of the transitions in small spaces and highlighting red. Oh, our favorite thing, highlighting red. Highlighting red's really easy, but it's often, uh, it's an easy thing to sort of mess up at the same time. So let's talk this through. Uh, the first thing is when we're, first of all, Dan, I would encourage you to go watch my Exploring Colors Red video. So I go deep dive for, you know, 20, 30 minutes on everything related to red. And really that's going to give you the answer here. Uh, now, when it comes to highlighting red in general, you want to use something yellow, yellow, white. Uh, and then you want to mix that into your red. 
uh, and then sort of glaze over an orange over it or something like that. Alternatively, you can just glaze over it again with a very thin red. So the key to highlighting red and getting really intense reds is to use uh, a very warm white or a warm yellow, something like an ice yellow or something even warmer. And you, uh, you then glaze back over that with very thin successive layers of red. It might look slightly pinkish on the first glaze, but on the second it will not. And since red is very transparent, it will simply be a uh, very, very intense bright red. So that's what you want to do there. Now, as to sort of, you know, the wings and, and doing transitions in small spaces, I mean, this guy doesn't have much in the way of, of truly small spaces other than these little bones. And I honestly think the, the biggest thing, if I was you, I would focus on is always think about light, the light to dark principle. Every light should be have a dark next to it and every dark should have a light next to it. And that should be successive throughout the miniature. So my example here is stuff like your, your horns. Um, they're just black and there's no transition on them. Uh, you know, so that kind of stuff. I, I The pink in general is somewhat of a, a tough choice uh, because he does look very pink all throughout. Like he has a lot of pink on him. Um, if you, you know, if you wanted that to be a different color, you could use something like a bone color or uh, that could, that could itself be black with bone colored horns protruding out of it. Um, but, you know, more tonal variation throughout those structures throughout here um and then hopefully the the detail on the red when it comes to like the muscle structures these tiny bones it's just a matter of again same thing like you want this stuff these little bones and these bone spurs coming out these should be the same color as these wing bone spurs um you've told me that this is you have like three different bone colors on here pick one and make it harmonious okay so that'd be the 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 next thing i would say there is like these should either be black, like the bones on horns on his head, or white gray, like the like the bones. And chances are, all of them should be the same color. So, if I was going to give you a piece of advice, it would be to, uh, it would be to unify that in you know a second bloodthirster you do because you said you were looking at doing another one, uh, and to and you know kind of move away from the pink and look more at at something that's going to add some more visual interest to it uh, on the whole. Now, as to wings themselves, I have a video on doing textured wings. I would go back and watch that. It's an old video, but it's still true. It has to do with a lot of dry brushes and successive washes, um, I think, is the key. You know, this color, uh, you had mentioned in the comment, that it made, your wife says it looks kind of like hamburger. It does. Um, you can change that by adding more contrast near the edges of the wings. Um, right now, you're kind of just like there's a wash, and then these things are bright, and that's it. Where what we'd want to see is it get darker here near the edges where it's folded up and brighter near the center where it's stretched out. So uh, there you go, Dan. I hope that helps. Uh, very cool model. Obviously, I'm a big fan of all the Creature Caster stuff, so I look forward to seeing more from you. Mike Lundstead uh, with our little droid here using the Serastro tutorial. Um, and he talks about it's the contrast over zenithal highlights. Um, I, I think the base, is, yeah, it's the sunny Naboo field. You could add some flowers and stuff to pull that out. That would probably help as well because Naboo had a lot of like flowers and plant life. It was a lush world uh in it so I, I but i think that's fine overall if, if i was going to give you feedback on this guy mike it would honestly be just more tonal variation over the droid um so go back in after the contrast with like a soft ivory color and kind of give me some highlights along his face and the tops of his shoulders and arms just stuff like that i know this you have to probably paint a decent number of these guys i don't know how many are in a force like i imagine these dudes are a little cheap throwaway guys uh but you want to make sure that you um that you add those kind of elements, even if it's just a couple simple thin layers um, back over the top of the contrast, it'll really help to bring some visual interest to it. Okay, uh, Sean uh, bring, he says, basically he's looking at struggling with the uh, his non-metallic metal, and so he's looking like for that. Now I have uh, several videos on this, um, as well as a more recent one, Sean, which might help because it talks about adding color. Um, now, I mean, the key is you still need to have contrast. He's going for this worn look. It still has to have contrast, and uh, you're you're good. But like in in your contrast, I like the spots. I like the stippling. Go farther with it. Still, um, you don't need to take it all the way up to highly reflective, and you can adjust that with volumes. So a shiny new axe will have lots of big, broad volumes of reflection. But even a dull thing is still going to reflect metal. It just has less reflective area. So you decrease the volumes. Uh, as usual with this, I'm going to use the shorthand of one, two, three, four, five, one being the highest highlight, five being the deepest shadow. 
you shrink the size of your one, your reflective areas, and you increase the size of your, let's say, four, because you don't want it to also be like you don't want it to have the super dark darks on it because that would also in uh, show it as being highly reflective. But you still want some of those dark blacks in there. Your tattoo work looks really cool. It's great. Lots of visual confusion there. So I think that's really good. Um, as to the shoulder, you need to go back in and like make sure these lines are nice and thin. Like the white reflection lines on the other side of the damage are way too thick right now. You want to make sure that's that needs to be like razor, razor, razor sharp. Okay. Uh, and then, but you know, as the reflection pattern, some more defined areas and lines. So like a highlight coming down here, a secondary highlight here would be good. So this is a one, this only goes up to a two and then your edges are ones as well. That kind of thing. Oh, recognize the face. Always a nice thing to see when you load it up in Facebook. If it recognizes the face, that's a good sign. Um, but those are my thoughts overall. This is good. You've got a lot of nice, uh, nice work here. So I hope that helps. Um, you can go watch the attached video as well. I talk about NMM a lot in that, uh, as well as the other tutorials that I have on it. But I, I hope I gave you some direction and thoughts there. Overall, looking really good. All right. Sam Thompson says he's a new painter and lives insight as to what you can do to take this color scheme farther. Sure, there's plenty of things. Um, so I like the, there's a, I like a lot of what you're doing here. You've got really nice colors. Your goblins have nice pinky pink noses. That's great. Here's where you want to go to go farther. One, some kind of complementary element would be really good. Um, so things like their little horns here on this squig could have like uh, sort of blue ridges, uh, striations in them to carry up. Why not? Maybe it could be the same kind of a deep, dark navy color like you've got their, uh, their, um, their cloth. Similarly, the bone striations in both their teeth, their teeth are far too monotone. So more contrast in the teeth, especially around the lower part of the tooth, around the gum line, uh, where we see a bigger transition. I don't imagine these guys clean their teeth very often. So, you know, stuff like that will go very far. Finally, I'd look at maybe a little bit of more tonal variation on the orange. Take that into a deeper color. You can add subtle brown tones. Um, brown is usually just a dark orange. Uh, so adding in a little more deeper browns to kind of add some more color and depth into your into your orange, I think would be a great way to go. Okay. Hope that helps. But overall, they look really, really great. Uh, Howard Kyle, uh, last two pieces for his Iron Jaws, Jaws Force. Uh, not sure about the weapon on Grimgore Ironhide or the base on the other. Sure. So let's talk about those two elements. Let's get to a point where we can actually see his weapon. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, we need more tonal variation in the axe. I mean, so again, like see my videos that are on, uh, you know, doing variation, non-metallic style variation on true metallic metal. Uh, I think that will really help. I would say the same, by the way, with the skin, we need more variation across there. It's not, doesn't really have the depth we'd want to see. But uh, the what I would recommend you go watch, actually, if you're looking specifically for the axe, is I have a video on doing Iron Jaws weapons. It's like somewhere in the 100 to 110 range. I don't remember. It's exact. It's around there somewhere. And uh, that hobby cheating, I do a very high variation axe uh, type of weapon. So it's a big choppa, but it would be you know easy enough to replicate over here. I think that will really give you the insight you're looking for as to that. Now, as to the bases in general, so so just you know, I'll talk about this one on the rock. More color, more stuff. It's it's flat rock, but there's there's no color to it. I need more browns, more greens, more just stuff like that. Nature isn't gray and white, so more. Um, same with this guy's axe. As to the coastline, it's not coastline. Yeah, I mean, you, it looks white. I don't know if maybe that is an effect that just didn't dry yet. Um, I haven't done a sandy beach base, but I have done a water effect beach um or, or sorry a water effect basing tutorial it's probably around the 60s um so go back and watch that one and that'll really help you out with kind of how to achieve an effect like you're trying to do with getting a blue water sitting next to a a, a coastline um, because right now it's you know just too foamy basically uh it's not selling what it is we need the water there you can do little ripples and waves um, you can use like a, a gloss gel, a heavy gloss gel from Liquitex or uh, Vallejo makes a water effect set or, you know, there's lots of different options, but something like that. All right. Sergey Bell uh, wanted to go with different rust effect than usual, trying to achieve smooth blends on the skin and the axe. 
Uh, yeah. So I think that just looking at the axe. Um, I think the rust effects looks good. It's nice. It's it's in the right places. So it's it's far away from the cutting blade, which is where we would see it. You're adding color into your deep shadow, which I think is effective. Um, I think you could push the. I think the blends are pretty smooth on the skin. That looks really nice. I think you could push the contrast farther. Uh, so I really like your rust effects. I think that's right in the correct place. Uh, I think you could push the blends on the axe cutting side a little farther, and I think you could push some of the highlights. Uh, up on the skin tone also adding a slight secondary skin color into your four uh, a deep purple or a deep red would be a really nice way to just some kind of glaze some of that in but overall this dude looks really good uh your skin is nice the axe looks great i i do very much like the way you've implemented your rust effect so i think that looks wonderful okay liam uh with Ad adrax agatone it's the salamander guy i don't know i didn't know that was his name uh, feedback on the true metallic metal, particularly struggling with where to place the highlights and shadows. Uh, sure. Uh, I think on the whole, looking over it, you've got mostly the right idea, to be completely honest. Um, this is a great example. So the last couple times I've been talking about this with adding value, this is basically what I'm talking about. And I think you did a great job with it here. Um, we've got this nice shadow down here on the side of the, the, uh, flamer. We've got some nice variation here. I really like what you did on the legs. I think that looks really well. Uh, that came off well. The hammer looks nice with the darker part up here, but you still got the outline and the lighter part here. Good light to dark change on the ac or, sorry on the hammerhead. This is exactly what I was talking about. Every light needs to be next to a dark. So I think that's good. You could push your contrast a little farther on some of these. So especially with the gold, come up to a slightly brighter white in your ones. So here, here here, here, basically, because you kind of have a straight top-down light pattern. So something like that. Um, the darker part coming out of the front of the brazier uh, looks nice. Like when you're doing a brazier like this, this front part needs to be quite dark because it wouldn't be, it would be the shadow cast by the light coming from the other side. So that's well-placed. Um, yeah, I think on the whole, you're doing a nice job. Uh, you're, yeah, these shadows look really good on here, on these, these top pieces on the axe. Yeah. I think this is nice work. You could add a little more color around your black. Uh, so uh, you, it looks like you got some nice brown, sort of a sepia-ish tone here. You could push that a little bit farther, especially up in the eagle and stuff. But I think on the whole, you're placing these in the in the correct place, and it's just a matter of refinement. I think you're you're onto the you're you're on the right track here for absolutely sure. So it looks really cool. Okay, Jason Ho with his Primaris Librarian for review. Um, sure. So uh, you didn't give me anything specific to focus on. So I'll just kind of give you a general and two big things pop out at me for you to work on, Jason. The first is tonal variation on the armor. It's very flat. You have some edge highlights, which is fine, but you could take that a little bit farther. Uh, you know, more color into the highlight areas, some kind of tonal variation across things like the circular plates. Uh, things like that would be really good. The second thing is these triangles on the bottom these are actually really tough to do when you do them they need to look when you're doing a regular pattern like this it needs to look perfect otherwise it will you'll immediately see that the triangles aren't even the key to doing a pattern like this is not just doing the red but then coming back with your white gray so you want to like try to sketch these out thinly with lines first in fact if you really want to get clever take a pencil a mechanical pencil and very carefully sketch in your triangles then paint over the triangles, and then you will still mess up, and that's okay. Doing freehand is not a matter of nailing it on the first time. I have lots of videos where I talk about freehand. Everybody thinks that people just come and like do this amazing freehand on the first time, and they just nail it. That's not how freehand works. Freehand is going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You paint the thing you're trying to paint, then you you know create around the edge, and you clean up, then you repaint some of this, then you paint around the edge more, and you go back and forth and back and forth. White and red and white and red and white and red. And that would be the same thing I'd recommend for you here. So uh, it's great. I love that you took a swing at it, which is awesome. It does look nice. You didn't like totally, it, the red is nice and solid, which is the first thing I often see people screw up. So you're doing a good job there. Uh, don't don't hold back on me with freehand when you're going to do it here. Give me something written on that scroll. Uh, you can get that text done. Uh, so I'd love to see something there. But on the whole, this is nice. Just focus on some more tonal variation. I think you're in the right place. Okay. Uh, Roman, Roman Tico, uh, trying to get constantly better. What would you, what would you need to do in order to turn this into a real competition piece? Well, 
competition is always tough. It will, uh, it will, it will, will test you. So, a couple things. One, black rim the base. Don't make it brown. Never make the edge of your base the same color as the top. Just it stands out. It looks. This is the edge of the universe. This isn't real. This is in the universe. If you make this the same color as this, you're telling me this is in the universe. It's not. This isn't real. This is. Secondly, more variation, more color, more interesting stuff going on down here. This is just sandy rock. There should still be color variation things going on down here. Okay. Now to the miniature itself. The answer is unsurprisingly, by the way, that tonal variation thing stands for this back rock too. Um, the answer is a lot more contrast and tonal variation, my man. Uh, that's like when you're painting a competition piece, it has to have a lot of visual interest. So everything has to come up. Like if he's got shiny reflective black, you know, sort of a, uh, a ghillie suit on and it has this reflective sheen to it, then you want to have a nice light line here going down with like a secondary color in it. So it's showing as a blue color or something like that. Or red, you know, then deep red and the deep red, black in the shadows. Um, just right now, he's kind of flat, and you're relying on like the satin of the paint to do quite a bit, along with some minor highlights. Farther with that, same with the gun, same with you know, kind of just everything needs to come up, up with tonal variation. Go watch the attached video I have down below. Your paint looks really clean, which is good. You've got that technique down. Um, now, as a side note for you, this is not a good competition mini. Okay, he's crossed in front of himself, which means he's a closed off figure. Good competition figures are open where you'll generally see as much of the miniature as possible. If you see like most people will do high end competition miniatures, they'll be a very open miniature where they're like something in each hand or they're open. They can show what's going on. Secondly, texture wise, he's very samey. He's mostly one texture. You can get away with that on something like a Space Marine where you can do then freehand and you can do uh other you know you can take this stuff up that they're they're ceramite to like this sort of metal reflective quality he's not going to necessarily have the same thing so like just it, I, there are techniques that make competition but the, the your miniature choice also matters a lot um so that's just sort of a my experience from working in competitions my best advice here is take that contrast take that tonal variation way up take that visual interest up it's not just all in running up highlights and shadows some of it's also just color variation having more a tone to your highlight and a tone to your shadow that's also tonal variation um, but things like that are what you want to look for but overall this guy looks great he's nice and clean it's an excellent paint job uh that's where i would go if i wanted to go to competition uh ryan easterling uh he's got some quick and dirty lizards done mostly contrast and he said is there any quick things he can do for improvement sure i always love questions like this because it's like, I'm not going to, we're not talking about trying to go up to a, you know, display quality. The question is, what could we do to go better? Well, first off, I'd black rim the bases. I just already mentioned that last time. Secondly, with things like lizards, dry brush before those contrast paints. Give me a nice, solid dry brush. Honestly, that's the best thing you could do. If I was going to give you one tip, Ryan, it would be a nice, heavy dry brush over the shields, over the lizards before you put on the contrast paints. Because it'll just create edges on all their scales. They're very scaly creatures. Duh, they're lizardmen. Uh, so like having those scales, they'll look more picked out. Like you did a ton of work. If you dry brush them, you want to go extra level. Like when you, I would zenithal them. I would use the process I use in my preparing for your best paint job. These are a perfect candidate for that. Wash them in an old oil, dry brush them in a light ivory contrast paint jobs, a good one. And it's going to look wonderful. And it'll be so fast to do before you actually paint the minis. So that would be my best piece of advice. All right, Bethany Graham, uh, many quick and dirty things. So this is a quick and dirty pumpkin head looking for one or two quick things to improve that could be applied across the army. Seems very similar. Uh, sure. So this guy doesn't have the same texture. So my honest answer here, Bethany, is uh, it's tough. But uh, I think if we're just talking quick and dirty, I would say some more shadows on the lower part of the pumpkin Maybe just some more, and then maybe a glaze or two to smooth your blends. So some of your green, like green and purple are both classically difficult colors to uh, highlight in the way you're highlighting them. So I would look at after you do this, going back with a soft purple glaze over here. Um, and, you know, same here with green. And that'll be, that'll be a nice opportunity to smooth out the paint job. In the same way, add some, like this is a coffin, so some 
color variation here. You know, give me just some light touches of some green washes, some brown washes. Not wash the thing. Don't wash the whole coffin. Just take a little bit of the brush and kind of stipple some around here and stipple some around there and stuff like that. Quick and dirty. You just you're taking an old brush and just going dot 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 dot. But it'll still add some interesting variation to what's otherwise just a big chunk of gray on the miniature. So hope that helps. All right. Bartaz uh, says trying out some jungle basing for the first time as well as the non-metallic style on the true metallic metal technique, trying to improve the face and skin tone. So any critiques related to those is appreciated. We're actually going to jump to this guy because I think this guy is an excellent example. So a uh, couple quick thoughts. The jungle basing, yeah, I think you're you're where you want to be. It's This is nice. Like just flipping through all the bases. Uh, give me more color variation on the jungle plants. Uh, a little more like painting on them will be good, but on the whole, you know, you're in the right place. Like stuff that's going on looks jungly. I totally buy these dudes in the jungle, so I'm down with that. Uh, the metal, we need to go farther. More transition throughout them. Look at adding a color. So maybe a light sepia wash or something, not over the whole blade. Again, just like in that, in that like three to four area, basically over your midtones. So you get a nice color transition in there as well. Go back and look at, uh, I think it's video 72, and you'll see what I'm talking about with the addition of just very light glazes of color. Now, as to the faces, uh, I actually think your skin tone is where you're the most successful here. Looks great. You could do some more glazing to smooth it down, but these guys are very small. It's probably not necessary. Um, I like the colors. They look very stark, like they're out in the sun, like in a bright yellow light. I think that's your big success here. I think it looks wonderful. So great work on that. Great addition of colors. I see lots of reds, purples, yellows, blues. Excellent. Excellent stuff, man. Okay. Luigi says, uh, first time he participated. Well, welcome, sir. We're glad to have you. Looking for freehand on the checkerboard and the color palette. All right. So first of all, I think we went a little too dark. Just color palette wise, when we're going to do things like these blues, pop them up for me a little more, especially this is the one time I'll say that because a Harlequin can be very ostentatious. Um, and the blues balancing out here, I think, would be fine. The other thing I noticed is the gun and his backpack are very flat gold. These things are like gems, so paint them like gems. And it'd be a great chance to add some more interesting color, especially a blue, to help balance that out more. Now, as to the checkerboard pattern, I think for the most part, you were pretty successful. You want to make sure your edges are nice and sharp. I could see a couple, like if we look back here, where it's not quite meeting. So again, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Let me see you go back, back, back and forth, okay? But on the whole, this looks really nice. I think your checkerboards are good. I can see places where they're uneven, like here on the back, on that back of the leg. So just make sure you go back in and clean up with that work. It's a, These guys are complicated and time-consuming to paint, but you're going down a good road. Your yellows are nice and bright and clean and smooth. Bring Pop up the blues and refine the checkerboards. Fill, paint the actual gems that are on the gun. Like make Don't just make the gun and the backpack gold. Do more with that, right? Like These guys are incredibly detailed miniatures. Uh, and they're very elite, too, so you don't have to paint a huge number of them, which is nice. So take those extra steps. But overall, he's good. So you got a lot of nice elements on here. You definitely have the diamond patterning thing down well. It's just refinement at this point. All right. Uh, Pekka wants to know, first submission here. Well, welcome. Uh, love to get some feedback on the soul swirl and skin. I love, I saw a couple people did this. This is awesome. Providing me with the black and white, which is great. Because this lets us see the tonal variation, right? Uh, it specifically, it lets us see the contrast. So uh, a light to dark variation. And you can see here how on things like the horn, it's popped way up. Uh, I like it here on the cloth. That's nice. It's purple, which is never going to show as bright. Skin. So it looks like we've got some good variation. But there's one part where it doesn't show as strongly as it should. And that's on the swirl. So when we go and look at the swirl... My problem with it is it's very flat and uh, just sort of whitish here, but it's so desaturated. What I'd love to see is add more yellows and brights in like that. Not We don't need to go crazy, but like an Escorpina green or something like that would be where you'd want to end. So it can kind of, it, it'll just, yellow has a higher luminosity, lum, lum, something, it's lumens, I don't know. It's the brightest color you sort of perceive, uh, and so it will tend to draw your eye. 
uh, red draws your eye for different reasons, but yellow is sort of your bright one that was very eye catching. So that's what I would say there. Now on the uh, so that's with the soul squirrel. Um, with the skin, I think we need a little bit of a color in here. He's very gray skinned. Something like a deep purple, especially down in the fore area. So not the shadow, but glazing into the shadow would add a lot of interest to him. It would also align with that sort of cloak and cape that's on him. You could also take it and bring some deep green in there. That would also work. That would contrast against the purple and align with the, the soul swirl. Either one of those would work. The point is we need some kind of color to create a little more variation in that way uh, of hue to the skin of the guy. But overall, this dude's cool. He reminds me of the like uh, the evil sorcerer in Hero Quest. It's super cool. Like the bad guy in there. Uh, Andy Walker with his OSL practice bust. Uh, light is a trash can fire from the right side and slightly below. Any comments are welcome. Well, first of all, this is a great thing to do. I love this is obviously the anonymous bust from Banshee, and it's great to practice these kinds of techniques on. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, if it is from below, just a couple of things I note, like the bottom of his nose here should be a little lighter. Um, this part of his eye right here would catch light. Like if the light is come, the, the light direction you have told me is that light is hitting at here, 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 and here. Light going that direction would also hit this ridge of the eye right here. All right. Uh, it would also hit this under part of the ear right here. It would also hit a little more on the bottom of the chin and a little more on the bottom of the nose. So just, you know, it's really a careful study of refining. But overall, I think it's good. You could increase the orange just a little. I don't mean actual orange. I'm not saying put orange on him. I'm saying the sort of that uh, a very light orange-ish tone into the skin. You could bring it out near into the edge of the lights. I think that would sell very well. And then conversely... On the other side here, I need more variation in the shadows. So the your light switches to cold, which is good, because if he's standing next to a trash can, then he's in moonlight, right? That's what would be the reality here if we had this kind of thing. However, my shadows need a little more blue tone in them, so something that draws just a little bit down. Again, I'm not saying take, like, Payne's Gray and go wild. I'm saying some very subtle additions of shadows, especially down here where it would be protected from both the firelight and from above, right? This ridge here under his ear where it would be very dark, this part of his chin. Like, we need to deepen those five shadows and push them a little bit more into the blue spectrum. But overall, this guy looks awesome. I really love the the um, the way you've captured that warm light. I think it, it's it's really nice. All right, uh, Ty, Ty, Tygo. I'm I don't know. I'm I'm terrible with names, so I apologize. Um, first time posting. Tried to focus on key elements: flesh, weapons, uh, and red armor. Everything else was rushed, but not sure you got the right balance. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about that. Um, yeah. So I mean, overall, these guys look pretty decent. I think the. Uh, by the way, I think the guy being at an angle is fine. You want to be careful with angles like that, but I don't think it's actually that bad. One small piece, don't make too big of rocks that overhang. You're kind of right on the border here. It's not too big, but if you go a little bit bigger than this, you're in trouble. Try to make like stand-up features like this just slightly smaller so you can have some earth around it. Do black rim the bases out. Make sure those are nice and clean. Um, with the red, see the advice I gave earlier on brightening up red because really what I need is a little more shadows. Uh, I like the blade transitions. Good. Push it a little farther here on some on some parts. But you're going the right direction. Like, I can see the nice shadows you've created. I think those are working well. So I like that. Uh, the skin is where we've got a lot of chances to improve. Um, now, it depends on how many of these guys you got to paint. So it, if you're going for, like, tabletop, you're fine. No issue to go farther. Okay? And I understand, Reavers, you might have, like, 70 of these in your army. So let's not get crazy here. If you want to par push farther, then more red tones and purple tones in the shadows of the skin is where we need to go. Our four and five of the depth is weak here. That's what we need to push. That'll also make the one and two seem more bright. Uh, same thing as always, though, with rocks and the bases. Rocks are not gray. Rocks in nature very rarely stay gray. There's rain, there's dirt, there's wind, there's dust, there's fallen trees and and, and algae. and, and Not algae, that's in lakes, but uh, moss. And there you go. Life. 
like life happens everywhere that you, you can, right? So um, some washes and simple things like that, just add some color, some reds, some greens, some browns on those rocks will make them look a lot better. Can use pigment, can use washes, can use a hundred things. Can even stipple some very thin paint on it. That would be fine. Okay, uh, Dwight, uh, question about conversions. Wanted a war shrine to be dedicated to Slanesh. You've made the right choice in life. Uh, didn't like the derpy things carrying it. I agree, they are super derpy and I hate them. Uh, fiends that you use to replace them don't have the club fist. I'm wondering if it went too far. First of all, ignore stuff like that. As long as the weapon is close-ish, they have clawed fists instead of clubbed fists. It's fine. Like, don't get too hung up on the... on. Don't sweat the deets on stuff like that. No one's ever going to look at this. Ever, ever, ever will you ever encounter anyone. And if you do, they're a terrible person. You shouldn't play them anymore. Who says, like, wait, club fists, those are claws. Like, get out of here. So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Your biggest challenge here, and I think we've talked about this before, Dwight, so I'm going to talk about it again. Too much yellow. Too much bright saccharine yellow on, like, the hair here. Like, it's just, it's overwhelming. Because it's so bright. When I look at this from the front, I literally can't see anything else but the yellow. Right? And that's that's problematic. We want we want to be careful with stuff like that. Yellow just draws the eye and like relax your eye and look at your own piece. Like don't look at anything in particular. Don't focus your eyes. Just let your eyes relax and take the whole thing in. The only thing I can see is the yellow. Right? Because it's so bright and overwhelming. So you want to bring that down, right? Be careful with those ultra bright colors like that. Um you can you can desaturate it. You can move into more ochre. You can move into a more sepia tone, washes, stuff like that. Anything will work. Just not, not, not super, super yellow. Blonde hair isn't yellow. It's not sun yellow. It never is. Don't paint it like that. There you go. Okay? Uh, but on the whole, it's, it's very bright. I mean, if I was going to give you a piece of advice, it would be, again, you know, there's some tonal variation opportunities here, especially in your purples. And your blues on the fiends. But I think they look fine as carriers for this. I think it's a good use of the fiends right now, frankly. Because it's about the only thing you're going to use them for. So, yeah. Overall, cool conversion. All right. Scott Radom. Uh, start of a new warband and a new technique. Trying to make the armor look textured and weather, not smooth. Not smooth. Uh, Warrior looks messy, looking for further CNC. Sure. So, worn armor. Uh, on the whole, I think it's fine. Uh, you could go, like, I think it does look textured. I'm not sure it's, you got a problem. I think it looks just fine. Like, you got some nice scratches in there. You could go for a little more wearing around the edges, like take a deep brown and sort of chip the edges. Um, I hate to keep referencing his videos, but uh, Darren Latham has it. I mean, he makes some great stuff, especially with kind of marine like things like this. He has some great videos on battle damaging marine legs. And, or sorry, <laughs> he used a leg in the, in the video on damaging marine-ish like type armor, which these guys aren't space marines but they certainly have a similar ish armor structure um but you can push in with things like some chipping and stuff around the edge i don't think it looks dirty i think it looks fine it looks worn that it reads like that to me um so uh, but some chips some specific chips like that are that are clearly damaged some scratches chips and dots so i have a video on doing battle damage and rust streaks uh it's like maybe 95 or something that it's in the 90s um, go back and we'll look at that and that'll give you the techniques for how to get the stippling down for the individual little things. And just some quick stipples around the edges where things would naturally hit, where he would naturally scrape. looks like you got a few of them. You could push that a little farther. And if you have some actual damage, it'll make the rest of the texture sell. Um, because you'll, the, the viewer will see the, the, the more visible ones and you want to be very light touch with this, just a few of these. And they'll be like, Oh, okay. I get it. The rest of it's also you know, minor wear and tear that I'm not seeing the detail of its scale. So it's just about tricking the brain like that. But overall, I think this guy's good. It's nice. The yellow works well. It's got a nice tone to it for looking old and worn. So yeah, I think you're good. All right. Uh, Joshua McIntosh, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Right on. Also give me a black and white. Fantastic. Uh, any advice you have to offer for these would be appreciated. Just shooting for upper tabletop. Okay, got it. Uh, one, see everything I've already said on the bases on rocks that are potentially too big and adding color. So that's number one. Uh, love the, the picture. Nice contrast on there. So that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that you're looking for dirty and fast tabletop. So if you're going for like dirty, fast tabletop, I think you're probably in the right place. Um, 
you could do some more distinct – you've got a few good chips in there. I mean, honestly, just, like, try to clean up your edges more. So if I was going to give you one thing, some of your edges are kind of wearing together, um, like stuff around here. You got some that are really well defined and some that are a little looser. So I would just focus in on getting the initial elements cleanly applied. I know that sounds ironic when you're going for a dirty miniature and then weathering. So my that's my best advice because the, the wear and the tear and the weather will stand out a little better if the parts are really individualized. And most of them are, but especially around his legs, things get a little messy. So keep that nice and like tighten up some of those edges, and I think you'll be in the right place. But overall, I mean, if you're just going for like a tabletop stand type of standard with some good wear, wear and tear, I mean, I think you're basically there. Uh, drill out your gun barrel and make sure the gun, uh, the little actual barrels are a different color. Always drill gun barrels. Always drill gun barrels. A, D, B, or G, B. Uh, Benjamin Alimony, uh, another building he kit batched and scratch built with GW bits, cardboard, styrene, and plaster, which looks freaking amazing. Uh, tried very light dry brush, a different gray over the wood, and indeed I love it. Can you see something I can improve? Yeah, gray with a light dry brush over the wood really does make wood look old and worn. Um, yeah, sure. So here's an easy one to jump out at. This looks fantastic, by the way. Wonderful kit batch. Like, this is fantastic terrain work, man. Good night. So good. Uh, but here's my piece. Uh, roof. Your roofing is very... This little house just got built. This is a brand new house. Uh, maybe that's what you're going for. I don't know. But, like, this thing has not seen a season of rain yet. Because if it did, there would be staining and streaks running down it and little bits of... This is, like, woods or something. So, you know, wood and wood is organic and will trap things that grow life. So we would see, like, some stippled moss and stuff like that and little green streaks. You can get it with, but you know... A little bit of paint, a little bit of washes around it, job's good. And just like, especially tucked under these ridges where water would tend to collect around cracks, where then it, there can be water sitting for a long time, and all that little biological life can attach into the wood and then start growing and, and finding a way. That's my biggest thing. Same with the stone, by the way. Streaks down the stone. So just a little more variation. You can get that through some quick stipples and, and, and not washes. You're not washing everything. You're using like a shade, like a GW shade wash, but just stippling in, into areas. Okay? All right. But yeah, overall, I mean, my God, what a fantastic piece of terrain that is. Absolutely wonderful. All right. So let's continue. Okay. Uh, Robert Matuzio with his forest-themed rock cut Trogoth. Love to hear feedback. Sure. So first of all, I think he's very forest-themed. Uh, excellent work on the crystals. Those look fantastic. That is great. Uh, I mean, overall, this dude looks great. I don't know what level you're going for, but you're certainly achieving a great-looking uh, troll here. The addition of the pink to the nose, the ears, very slight on the knuckles is wonderful. A um, little bit more of these these little rocky ridges around here. These can be picked out slightly differently. I think that would help. And a little bit more variation on the skin. So just a little bit more tonal variation, especially around the underside of his belly. We could have some splotching and spotting on his belly, too, if you want to add some visual interest. Avoid large areas of the same color is a general rule in miniature painting. You want variation kind of in lots of different ways. So having, like, some some little demon dots type of thing where he's got a little belly spots or something coming up here could be good. He could have little, little hairs or something on his tummy, on his tum-tum. We could deepen the shadows around here and here. Like, again, work. we could have some different colors in the armpits. Lots of options. Any of them would be okay. But overall, I think he looks great. Um, the skin looks nice and healthy. Yeah, like this back rock is... The, the rock is where you have the most chances to, to vary more. Make that a different color. Push up the variation more. Make it look different than the skin. But the, the gems look great. The skin is nice and pink. You've got lots of good tones there. I think that's solid all the way through. All right, uh, Ekarasaur, Ekarasaur, sure. Uh, oh, Michael, that's so much easier, Michael. All right, uh, experimenting with metallic paints and inks. They're both a lot of fun to work with. Followed your advice and got the technical paint to crack nicely. Excellent. Uh, also tried again battle damage on the chest. Uh, realized the model was too blue and could be more contrasted. Decided not to paint the leather pieces with an orange scheme to address that. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Looking for feedback on the orange leather versus black. Uh, and varnish, matte, or glossy over metallic paints. Uh, neither is the answer there. I'll just answer that straight away. Don't varnish your metals ever. Just zero varnish on metals. Um, okay, so there you go. 
Uh, and yes, I agree. We need to deepen the shadows. Uh, when it comes to the lightning claws, be I'm not sure if this is supposed to be blood. It doesn't read like blood. I guess I can kind of guess that it's that. So my basic feedback is if you're going to make lightning claws, you need really, 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 really hyper sharp thin lines. So that means get yourself a white ink, show some flow improver, that kind of thing to get those ultra sharp lines. And yes, deeper shadows on the blue, I think, is where you're at, where you need to be. Uh, as to the battle damage, oop. Uh, darker, I think, is what we need to see there. I don't really know if you want to scratch away to silver. It should still be darker gray than that. Uh, gray approaching black is what you want with just a little bit of the lighter blue underneath. Um, now, as to the orange leather versus the gray leather, if you're asking me, like, which one of these is better, let's look at this guy. Now, let's look at this guy. This is so much more visually interesting. Uh, like, this is killing it over here. So, my personal opinion, this is way better. You could desaturate it a little farther if you're still un you're still unsure if this is a little too overwhelming, which it is quite bright. If you want to bring it down a little, a little more brown tones into it. Like, mix a little bit of your orange-brown into it. Bring it down a little farther. Reduce the yellow. That will help balance the model out. But I think you're going the right direction. This is so much more visually interesting. Hope that helps, Mike. All right. Uh, Marshall. Uh, been a long while since he posted his last uh, Tau. Uh, new things he tried with this commander was a glowing effect on the guns and added some heat wear damage on the jetpack exhaust. Tried a blue effect and failed, uh, especially so. Long story short, ended up with his orange. Also tried to use the night helm and the two antennas to try and create the triangle you talked about in your color theory video. Do you say, uh, sure, so let's talk about that. Do we have our color triangles? Let's look at some heat. Let's look at some glow. Okay. All right. Good contrast photo. Okay. So first of all, I think these gun barrels are supposed to be drilled out. Drill, the, drill them barrels. It's a little overexposed, the picture, so it's hard for me to tell. I think the damage looks good. The heat exhaust here looks nice. Looks like we got a nice sepia out of purple to blue. If I could, if I had to zoom in, I could tell for sure. But I think you're in the right direction there. You got some bright reflections, so it's kind of tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think you're in the right place. Um, things that jump out at me are the oh, also good variation on the rocks. I can see some nice oranges and browns in there. You could go farther, especially down here where water would get captured, like the night helm. I think he's. I think that's a nice addition. Yeah, I think that's fine. Good, nice, rusty, crusty night helm that took a shot to the face and fell off. I dig that. The damage all looks good with the... Uh, I think we could push just some of the contrast on things like the metals farther. That jumps out at me like the copper stuff here could go a little farther. Uh, I th Let's see. And as to the color triangle with the red... Yes, I think this is fine. I'd love to see it actually a little bit more. These really are close enough to almost read as one. Two red elements on his arms in some place would really sell it. Because then when I'm looking at him front on, like, this is a pre it's a weak triangle because this is almost one and this is almost one. So, like, a, something on, like, a red stripe down his legs or red on the guns here and here would be a much stronger triangle for pushing the color out. You don't just need to have three points. You kind of need to have those three points have some strength and balance to them. So you could even use these three and then, like, the stripe and two spots on the guns. And then we've got a nice bigger triangle, right, that's shaped like that. So something like that is what I would look at. But overall, I think this looks good. Um... And I don't think that, you know, when you've got a big piece like the red helm down here, I would rust that out some more. It Red is very eye-catching. And this, the only problem with the night helm is it does still very much draw your attention. So add some more dirt to that. Just literally you can wash it to make it look like it's been rained on and dirt is collected more. And desaturate that red way down and you'll solve that problem. All right, Andrew, first time submitter. Hey, excellent. Well, welcome, Andrew. Piece of your attempt, do the best you can and see where I am and where I need to go next. Uh, been going through hobby cheating up to 110 or so. Well, you know, there's 110 to go. Uh, and practicing along, but this is my first time taking those skills and flying them. Start to finish on a tire miniature. 
Uh, excellent. Well, I'm happy to help, and thanks, man. That's that's wonderful to hear. Okay. So on the whole, this is a really cool mini. You did a great job. Um, let me just say you you definitely are in a great place in your on your painting journey. So stuff that I see immediately. I'll give you a few things to work on. Okay. One, see all my previous comments on stone. We need more variation there. Two, uh, the goblin uh, looks good. His skin could still be pushed farther, especially with some pinky, more pinkiness in his nose, in his lips is where I really see the opportunity. I like the, the area around the eyes and the ears. Those look really nice. A little more light and highlight, no, a little more number one up on top. Same with his hands. And then more tonal variation on the elements where you, you have them. So I mean both color and contrast. The yellow here is too samey. Same with the mushroom patch, right? That kind of stuff. These mushrooms shouldn't all be just yellow. They should have browns on them and spots or stripes or variation or something. Something to break them up from just being a big old patch of yellow, right? That is, you, you got to here, you painted them yellow, you said, and you were done. Keep pushing on that. Same here with this the, the actual mushroom cap. It would be interesting if the mushroom cap got darker under him. Just some nice soft purple glazes pulling toward the top because he's very light. So then we would have a light next to a dark, next to a light, and da, 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 that would all continue, right? So I would say those are probably the areas that I would give you to, to, to focus on to improve. But overall, this guy looks wonderful. He's a really, really cool mini. Um, he's a great member of the Gabapalooza, and I think he did a really nice job with him. So I'm glad I was able to help, man. This looks wonderful. Hope I gave you some ideas for where to go next. All right. Uh, oh, boy. I'm just going to say hobby, because that's I can't do that. Uh, so, uh, oh, well, thank you very much uh, uh, for the happy birthday wishes. That's very nice of you. Uh, finished a long-time project. Looking for overall opinion. Uh, a lot of effort to create a top light view on his skin using glaze and layering techniques and GW paints. For the axe, gave a go at the scale 75 metal alchemy, but it seems very tricky to get a nice transition. Um, would you recommend the scale 75 gold alchemy for future projects? Uh, okay. So my recommendation is always Vallejo metal color, but you need the gold and the copper. And you use different mixes of the gold, the copper, and a silver to get different variations out of it. That's what I do. That would be my strong recommendation. Okay. Now, so that's just that part. Um, like, I don't really love, to be completely honest, the scale 75 gold uh, line. I just, I don't love it. Uh, okay. As to the skin, like, like first I want to step back and just take a look at the whole piece and say, it's a great looking go trek, man. You did wonderful. Okay. Love the boots. The skin looks nice. It's very bright, very, very cleanly applied paint. Uh, the scene is good. Let's let's talk about where we can go. Uh, your metal, I think, looks good. We need to pop out the edges. So um, what I mean by that is, like, this thing is reflective. I need more strong reflections around each of these little runes and stuff here in the same way you did this edge, in the same way you did these edges. These edges here would catch the same light, okay? For the hair, I need it to get darker down by his head, down here, and uh, just to make sure we we have that nice that nice contrast between his the tip of his skull and the where his mohawk starts. The variation on the copper metals looks really nice though down here, like these these um these elements. The chain looks really good. I love how the chain came out. That looks wonderful. This is fan freaking fantastic. Okay. So good stuff there. Um, we need more shadows and stuff on some of the gold up around his shoulder. And then what I would say on the skin is it's good. Go watch my painting Ruddy Dwarf Skin video. We need a little more red, a little more shadow. Okay. You're, you've got some really nice top-down highlights. Your one, two, three, and four are all in a good place. We need a little more four, a lot more five. So a little bit more depth into that skin. Uh, because right now it's, it's very short, shallow, soft shade. I need a little bit more there. Okay. Uh, same with the beard here and here, like darkness where there would be a lot of depth to the layers next to his braids 
and in this area. So a little bit more shadow pushed in there. But overall, the sky looks absolutely wonderful. Love these black and whites people are including. It's great. And this really shows off what I'm talking about. You can see how on your metal, it looks fantastic. Look at that contrast. Exactly what we'd hope to see in metal. We go way up into white here. We go way down into black here. Perfect. I, this is a thing I cannot recommend enough. It, people, If you all start submitting this and including black and whites, you're going to make my life so much easier. And you're going to make your own life easier. Because when you take a picture, you're going to see where you don't have variation. For example, here on the skin, right? When we turn the skin of the Skaven or Gotrek into black and white, it looks very, very, very samey, right? Now, we don't want it to look like the metal. We don't want to go this far. But a little bit of extra shade in here, a little bit of extra shadow, um, you know, mostly think of the area of the volume of your one, two, three. Here on your axe, it's quite evenly spaced. Here on the him it's just way out you still want to keep that but we need a little more down here especially like around this uh shoulder muscle and his triceps and biceps that kind of thing okay so i hope that helps great great work overall very very cool go trek all right uh next up jeremy uh hello and happy 40th well thank you so many people wishing me happy birthday that's absolutely fantastic thank you um, so <laughs> two years and you'll be there, scout ahead and report back. Uh, it's, it's not going to be great, I'm sure, but I'll, I'll keep you informed. Um, so gold dragonborn for a friend's D and D character. First non-metallic metal steel attempt. Uh, give me better photos in the future, but you said you're doing them fast. So I accept this time, next time, indirect lighting. If you can see a shadow in the picture, you have too much direct light. Uh, and yeah, I get it with the WizKids mini man. You don't have to apologize to me on that. I, I understand. That's how they are. Okay. So the story here is contrast all over the place. Uh let's talk let's so I'm gonna talk about three core elements. The metal, we need more darks and I need more lights. Like we gotta come way out. You're running two through four, I need a one and five. I need deep, deep darks here, hidden especially between these scales. And I need these that line and that tip to come out to like sharp crack and white. Same for the sword, but be, this is like a weird sword shape to do in general. But you want to like try to do your best to define an edge and separate. Like if the edge has anything, you want this edge to be an area of highlights that are running vertically. Like this should be very bright and this should be very dark and this should be very bright and this should be very dark. And there should be a white line here. And then we can just kind of gray all this out or run a similar volume here. Okay. Same thing there. Uh, the shield, I think, looks pretty good. You could pop up your highlights a little more, but I think the shield is better. Um, it looks like it has better darks. The cloak is the next place I need to see that tonal variation, especially in red. Go watch the Exploring Colors red video. Give me some soft glazes of purples, browns, mix in black, you know, whatever. There's lots of different ways we could go, but just give me that, that higher contrast on the red. Red can look very luscious. We want that nice, rich tonal variation across the red. But overall, cool. I mean, for a D&D mini, I'm sure your buddy will enjoy it. And I hope that uh, I hope this gold dragonborn is very successful in all of his quests, earning fame and glory or money or love or whatever he happens to be questing after. All right. Chad bringing us a couple of uh, daemonettes, which I always love. Uh, also a first time submitter. Trying to nail down a visual theme for your Slaanesh Godseekers. Something really quick to paint at tabletop. Cool. Uh, so want some more desaturated than what's in the picture, focusing on heavy contrast between dark purples and off whites. Uh, okay, sure. So let me just say, I think if you're going for a tabletop quality, you're pretty much where you want to be. Now, here's what I would state. Easy answers to pop out this contrast a little more. One, give me some deeper purples using, again, your contrast into the deep parts of the claws here here, here, and here. That'll help reinforce your color triangle that I that I mentioned that was mentioned before. Two, uh, make the toesies a different color. So they have there's a distinction between the flesh of their feet and their their toesies. They have bone toesies. Give me that also being in the dark purple. You can just you know touch that with the same thing. That will also create a nice visual break between the dark purple of their feet and the snow that you have around them. So. Overall, though, I think that's would be what I would do if I was going for quick tabletop, okay? 
You could do things like pop the edges of the claws out a little bit, bit more, like take whatever you wash these with pink, mix it back in with some white, and just do a nice layer over the edge of the claws. That would be a next step if you want to take some extra time. But going for tabletop, I think this looks nice. The skin looks good for a fast tabletop job. Uh, the metal's fine. You got some good deep recesses there. Balancing that purple out will help, and will help the skin also seem more stark and alien and not human. All right. Uh, Serden, uh, first time submitting is Primark Layman Russ. Uh, okay, sure. So what can we do to improve it in general? Good old Layman Russ. Um, all right. So, well, first of all, he looks really nice. So I'll just start there. Um, like he's a, he's a great looking model. Um, my, a couple elements jump out to me. Uh, so one, we could add a little bit more variation across the gray of the armor, um, specifically in places that would be in deep shadow. Here along his leg, that's a very, very deep shadow. Here where he's he's got this like extreme contrapposto position. So like this is very deep shadow. This is very deep shadow. Taking that down a little bit and popping up your grayish highlights here on the top of his arm, top of his backpack, top of his shoulder, those elements. Um, as to the skin, a little bit, probably a few more glazes of your mid-tone just to kind of smooth out some of the transitions. I think that would help. The hair looks really nice. You nailed blonde hair. I think that looks wonderful. So no need there. You're you're right where you want to be. Um, just a quick final note. When you're doing these like sword hash lines, thinner. Um, thinner. You've got to get like really, really, really sharp lines. You need a super fine sharp brush. You need that metal paint to be rock and thin. Like again, Vallejo metal color is really your best bet for this. I do like the color on the sword, so I think that looks great. But just some like little thin touches. If you can't get it with your metal paint, then take this uh, rusty brown color that's here and push in from the outside. Like put your brush here and just push right up against real careful and right up against and right up against until you get it down super, 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 duper thin. So back and forth. But overall, I think this guy looks really cool. You've done a, a great service to uh, to Layman Russ. He's uh, he's looking awesome. All right, Sang, uh, this month's entry. Yep, okay. So let's take a look. Uh, I think it looks really nice. Um, very clean uh, paint job. You know, good elements of that. I think Sang, my biggest feedback for you is going to be, again, keep pushing that contrast on the white. So get a little bit of uh, some kind of gray color. You could maybe use like the Space Wolves gray contrast. It's a very soft shade. It has almost no impact to it. And you could just glaze in with that, maybe 50-50 with some contrast medium. A couple glazes to deepen the shadows on the white, especially like here on the bottom of the shoulder, here between the legs, up under here, uh, around this, this piece that's kind of vertically and wouldn't be catching a lot of light. Those kind of elements, I think, would be where I'd push. That's my major feedback for you. Um, same thing, but I guess minor feedback when you do things like this gold, a little more variation, more shadows, more highlights, standard comments on contrast on metals. Again, you can see the linked video for details, but overall, I think he looks really nice. The red, uh, Aegis on his chest pops. That's great variation there. Your reds in general are rocking and rolling. So I think that's in a great place. Okay, Dan, um, Last month's feedback was eyes, tonal variation, tonal variation, contrast, and tonal variation. Hopefully this one is better. Made a more conscious effort to have multiple kinds of contrast, warm, cold, light, dark, and texture. Also your first attempt at OSL. Uh, well, I'm glad you were listening. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the good, you definitely learned, I, like I can see the lessons in play here, so I like it. Um. This needs to be a little more orange in tone. Yellow candlelight doesn't reflect orange or doesn't reflect yellow. Um, turn all the lights off in your house and light a candle and get, and, and walk around and look at how the candle reflects off of different color surfaces. And what you'll see is it's a much orangier tone of yellow. It's more ochre tone pushing into orange than it is yellow. Okay, so just that's a, a, a note there. This guy would have to be in extreme darkness to make this little candle. Uh have that much also i same thing goes for the candle itself a little more orange tone to it the variation on the beard looks wonderful oh my goodness did you succeed there great 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 work caught the light has a wonderful reflection yes 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 okay uh i don't love the blue rope here that didn't need to be there it's a couple spots of a very bright saturated color that just 
there's no other place that that exists. So be careful on that. Um, I think the OSL, your placement is pretty fine. Again, it just needs to shift tone. Uh, as to the texture on the leather, yep, nailed it. Good to go. Uh, as to the chain, I'm going to say tonal variation again. So more like this chain, you've told me this guy is in darkness because if a candle's casting this kind of light, this guy is in like a pitch black cave. This metal would not be this shiny, right? So we need way more shadow down here on the opposite side of the reflection. Like if this is the reflection, we need way more shadow down here. You cannot strike a match without creating a shadow. And so it is too in miniature painting that if you're going to do OSL, we have to deepen the shadows. So that's my, uh, that's my feedback for you there. But overall, I can definitely see the improvement. So well done. Okay. William Brown. Uh, here's his recent bust of Lorene from the Scale 75 Kickstarter. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, okay. So my biggest single piece of advice for you here, love the wings. Uh, those look fantastic. Good texture. Good demon dots. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. Uh, I need more tonal variation on the skin and especially the armor. One of the keys with busts is just more. I say this all the time when people paint busts. How do you paint busts? You paint it until you can't stand it, and then you do that all over again. Twice as much as until it's ready to drive you insane. Go until it drives you crazy, and then do twice as much. <laughs> That's busts. That's bust painting. Because I need more in the skin. I need more highlights, I need more variation, I need more color. When we're painting in the scale, same with the armor, by the way. I need colors reflected in that metal. Um, I need, you know, just more contrast, more deeper shadows, those kinds of elements. Uh, so that would be my feedback for you, William. But overall, I love the skin tone choice. I think everything here color-wise works, uh, especially the wings framing them and that nice, wonderful, fleshy, but demonic tone. I think that looks great, that, like, leathery bat wing. It's fantastic. Uh, it frames the mini really well. I just need to see more life in the skin. Okay, Alan Thomas. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Haven't painted any of his Death Watch this year, so he thought it'd be a good palette cleanser from AOS as well as painting 20 doors. Looking for feedback on the direction I took with uh, Black Power Armor. Really wish he was painting a red chapter. Uh, okay, stole a bit from Cujo and Darren Latham as far as direction. Would like to know where I can prove. Uh, sure. Well, if you're watching Darren's Black Armor video, that's good. Uh, is that, what's his name's head? The, whatever his name is. Also, I do like the, the Miss Lee standing on. That's very funny. Uh, the red looks good. I love the red on the cape. Okay. So, light on the armor. You're going the right direction. You have good light placement. Now we need to get into the smoothing phase. Uh, so we just need those glazes. If you watch when Darren does those light, like, I like your, your sketches to do that light. That's fine. You're using the hashes to do it. There's two different techniques. Um, like Cujo uses the hashes. Darren shows it with just like the, the layer lines. Either is valid. Okay. Uh, but the key is then if you watch either of them, they then use glazes to smooth it back down. Also, if you're going to do lines, you got to do more hashes than this, man. You got to like, it has to be complete like i can see space between the hashes i should never see really space trust me it will still sell so more lines um you're just layering them over top of each other over and over again and pulling it out pulling it out pulling it out um go and watch my um go and watch my brushed non-metallic metal steel video and you'll see how i then use the glazes to pull everything together because that's what i'm really talking about but overall, I mean, I think you're you're going the right direction as far as the placement goes. Uh, you just need to smooth it down and get that going. Uh, it's a shame because a lot of the black armor, like sort of space marines, do have cool stories. But I agree with you. I hate playing, painting black armor. It's what's tripping me up on my sisters right now. I don't even know where to go because I don't want to use the regular black armor, but I don't like any of their existing color schemes. So time will tell. But I there I think you're moving along nicely. All right, Tom Thorpe. Uh, well, happy Thanksgiving to you. Uh, and we're glad you posted. First time picking up a brush, uh, in the both in 17 years. So, okay, great. Uh, found a few warriors in your parents' attic with half a dozen or so old paints. Had a go at repainting him. Had a great time slapping paint around and trying stuff out. Keen for some advice on where to go next. Well, here's your next place to go paint a lot more miniatures, like a lot more. 
Like, good job on getting one back out. Excellent work. Now paying a thousand more. <laughs> like, I can't give you better advice than that. Um, that's gonna be start. But the 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 real thing is work on things like your brush control and stuff like that, making sure it's smooth. It looks like you've got a pretty decent start. Uh, you clearly have some some fine control, but I can see things like you see where the black got up on the gold here. You can see where this gold got down here. So just, you know, refining and clean up is kind of your 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 good first step there. Um, and then guess what? It's all tonal variation, baby. Take a drink. Don't actually, if people drank every time I said tonal variation, one of these reviews, they would be dead of alcohol poisoning by the time it was over. So, uh, so don't do that. Uh, but the, uh, but more shadow in there, I think is the way to go. Uh, so yeah, uh, watch the, the video that's attached and that'll give you some good advice, uh, on where you can go with some stuff. But for your first miniature back, this is fantastic. I mean, this is the first thing you put paint to in 17 years. You're doing a great job, man. You're in a great place. So you have the fundaments in really, in a really strong place. Now it's just a matter of refine, refine, refine. All right, Chris Smith, uh, Mortarian. Uh, wanted to try paint and weathering without using pigments. Painting rust was interesting, to say the least. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look in here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's. It's really nice. I think there you go. That's a nice picture. There we go. Nice and zoomed in. Um, I think the biggest thing I would say is on things like the the gold. I need to see more of that variation as to what's going on with the gold um with the white you know he's in like the older death guard scheme which i think is fine um i think that looks good uh a little bit more brown spots could actually be good with some soft stippling paint uh you've got some i think you push that farther what we really want to focus on here is like is on ironically on this very dirty miniature is just cleanliness between the sections we we need to make sure everything's well defined um, some of your paint's a little chalky from like some dry brushing or things like that. So you want to focus that back in. Like stuff like the tubes have way too much contrast between the top of the tube and the bottom. Glazes to smooth that down. Uh, and more variation in the gold, I think, would really be the place to go. Uh, when you get to things like the the his Reaper, um, I do like the uh, inclusion of the oxidation. I think that looks nice. Picking out things like these bones and stuff like that. Just making sure all the elements have distinctive colors and palettes and really show. He's such a complicated miniature and he's so busy. You've got to make sure that the individual elements really stand out. Same with his wings. Like making sure the um, these areas of the wings have a different color from the little tracy bits in them. I think is a nice place to, to, to be. Okay. But uh, very cool, man. Uh, he looks great. All right. Danny Carroll. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you at CanCon as well, buddy. Uh, looking for feedback here on overall composition, particularly in terms of colors. The blue isn't working for me, going for the cyber industrial vibes. Well, you already know. Like Again, I can't say this, stress this enough. If in your mind something doesn't work, you are correct. <laughs> Like, if it's not working for you, you're, you're, your subconscious is telling you it's wrong. Now, as to the, uh, the the rusty yellow, I think it's fine. You need more brown tones in there. Like, you're very in the sun yellow now. More ochre, more browns to create more shadows and tonal variation across the yellow. The blue doesn't work because it's a big chunk of hyper bright saturated blue way up there. Um, honestly, I would look at a copper. Like, make that a copper. And if you want to introduce some blue, oxidize it. So that's going to be flip what's your dominant color. Right now you have like blue with just some rusty brown. Flip it around and make it coppery or bronzy. So it's mainly brown with some green blue oxidation. And bing, you're, you're bing, 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 popcorn. You're in a great place. So that's my best advice. I'll assume you're not done with the base yet and I'll give you a pass on that. But I do hope to see obviously a painted base on that eventually. So that's my biggest piece of advice there. Some more tonal variation, deeper shadows on the yellow. Flip it to a bronze ball with oxide you know in the cracks and stuff oxidation and you'll get that nice blue tone in there try to work it in somewhere else i would also put some bronze in other places like maybe his feet are bronze like his boots are, are sort of in that that tone maybe you know just maybe the gun has it and then place some oxidation in a few other places maybe this circular plate is bronze you know we can have you can have it placed elsewhere too so like make a scatter that around and then oxidize it and you're good to go 
All right, Tobias. A uh, guy had a lot of trouble with composition-wise. Non-metallic metal is tough as well. Love a review on both. Yeah, this White King is super fun. Uh, so, as to the NMM, let's start there. Um, I think that basically we didn't get enough highlight in some of the gold. Um, it needs to come a little brighter, but I think it's not far off. You could also try placing some, again, like oxidation colors into the shadows. A little bit deeper shadows. Get a, get me a nice touch of purple-black there in the deeper parts, and I think that'll really sell that. Uh, yeah, just a little bit down. Basically, push a little farther, and in your deepest shadows, you could then stipple in some oxidation colors, some, some oxide-like things, verdigris, turquoise, blue-green, something like that. And I think that would really make that pop and bring it in line compositionally with the rest of the piece. Now... As to the silver pieces, I actually think they work just fine. Same thing. And the shadows, we could work in a little rust. So you could do a little stippling of brown or orange in there. Uh, I wouldn't go too much orange. You don't really need that in here. But a little bit of a brown with maybe a brownie orange. Just slightly pushing in. That could work. Okay. Uh, so something like that might be what you want to look at. Now, as far as composition goes, I actually think you nailed it. I don't really see a problem composition-wise. The purple and green look nice. They feel pretty in balance. Yeah. No, I don't see any issue. If you want to, if you want to go for extra points, take a take your green and place it in your two spot here on the sword. Light glazes of the green going into the sword would make this pop, pop, pop. Okay, so that's my best advice for you. Just. A little bit of that scattered around. But composition, I think he's really strong. That's the only kind of thing that sticks out to me because that sword is so much purple. But everything else looks really nice. Like, when you go to the cloak, it feels appropriate. The texture breaks it up well. Yeah, I think he did a great job there. So it looks really good. Okay, Alex. Uh, so, uh, Grey Wolf Battle Leader. Uh, physical Likes physical composition. Unsure about whether the color composition of the model. Is there anything really glaring I'm missing? Okay. Does the base draw too much focus? Yes, because of the blue thousand sun. Um, the answer there is yes. So, like, you need to desaturate some of that stuff down. Like, make him look frozen. Make him look snow-covered. Like, put some snow on top of him. Boom. Easiest way to hide that. Like, you still get the idea, but then he's not... I, like, this blue is so bright and so gaudy, right? Um, I don't love the green axe. Compositionally, if this axe was uh, a blue-white power axe, we would be in business. And I would have zero problems with the composition all of a sudden. The issue is we've got that bright red to strike against the blue, and then we suddenly introduce this singular green element, and it's the only thing I can look at. Like, the problem is your biggest eye-catching things right now are not the marine. It's his axe and this thousand sun that's frozen down here. So, like... The base that looks like, by the way, this big chunk of ice is weird. Like, we should shove more snow down here and on top of this Thousand Sun. And that would honestly be a great way to, to both cover him and make this. This needs connective tissue between this big ice chunk and whatever's under it. I get the impression you're trying to go for, like, he just kicked this ice on top of him, is now running over him. Cool. He can still have snow on him because he also kicked down. Like, if you ch put a big chunk of ice like that, there would also be snow that fell down. Uh, as to the Space Wolf itself... Uh, probably a little deeper shadows you could push. Maybe a little bit stronger highlights, but this is moderate stuff at that point. Like, we're talking tiny touches. I think the compositional elements are where we need to push. If this was like a blue-white power axe and we had that snow, uh, the runes, I know you also made them green. You could just keep them or make them red or something, and that would be fine. I, but other than that, I think you're in a nice place. Real soft, real smooth, great space wolf. Yeah, that's my feedback. Okay, Jim... Uh, in general, yes, Jim, we want finished pieces. I'll look here this time since you posted it, but, uh, we only want finished pieces for the next thing. Uh, so at any rate, you'd love some general feedback on what to improve at this stage. Uh, still lots to finish. Okay, so I'll give you some quick and dirty thoughts. More variation on the skin. See all previous comments. Um, as to the, the metal effect, again, push the contrast farther. I mean, my biggest answer to you, Jim, is at the process you're at, is keep pushing uh, and bring in more tones into the skin, more reds, more purples. And as far as the metal armor goes, 
give me more contrast on that the gold the steel stuff like that like make that pop out more we could add a little bit of of slight rust effect in the deep shadow like in your five hide some brown or brown orange if you wanted a little bit of other interesting color variation to kind of pop that around but that's my biggest feedback for you in general though finished submissions only so something for the future and with that we come to the end of the month i just want to say a thank you to everybody who submitted this month wonderful work from everyone truly truly fantastic stuff it was an absolute pleasure to look over it i do hope that this was helpful as always uh if you have questions you can leave them in the comments of the video and i'll certainly respond there uh but if you've got uh if you've got any other additional things that you thought of after based on my feedback leave those there if you want to join us on your hobby journey link is in the description but as always i very much appreciate you watching this one and we'll see you next time.